we definitely got our crispy skin. This is that good, it should be illegal. How's that for moist? Mm. I'm Chewy and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to spatchcock a chicken. I'll even show you how to cook it as well. <laughs> Smoky charcoal chicken is a favorite at my place. So just sit back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. Today's chicken is brought to you by the great people out at Gippsland Premium Meats. It is a 1.8 kilogram, soon to be tasty bird. To spatchcock a chicken means we need to remove the spine. And the only way to do that, well not the only way, I could use a chainsaw, but I'm gonna use some kitchen shears. So just cut up one side of the spine and repeat the process up the other side. And then using a sharp knife, you wanna cut through this cartilage here, only about five mil and using your fingers, bend it back and that'll expose that breastbone. And your chicken now will lay nice and flat. And lastly, you just wanna bend the wings around just to hold them in place during the cook. Using paper towel, just pat the skin down, just drying it off as much as we can. This is just gonna to help to crisp it up when we cook it. How easy was that? Nearly as easy as liking this video. We'll be making our own seasoning today. Part of it is gonna help crisp up that skin and the other part is just for flavor. So into a shaker or a bowl if you don't have one, two tablespoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of kosher salt, four teaspoons of garlic powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of finely cracked black pepper and two teaspoons of paprika. Give this a good shake up. <laughs> <laughs> now make sure you use aluminium free baking powder otherwise your chicken's gonna taste like a tin can the seasoning we just mixed up is to help the skin get crispy and since the underside of the chicken has no skin it's pointless using it there so instead we're just going to apply a little bit of olive oil and brush that over and we're going to sprinkle over some of this vegeta powder all it is is a vegetable stock in powder form, but it tastes absolutely brilliant as a seasoning. Now we just want to hit the, the legs and the wings on the other side with that seasoning that we, we made up to crisp up the skin. And then we can flip the bird over and just give the whole bird a nice coating of our crispy skin seasoning. Now, when applying a rub, I'll always apply it from about 30 centimeters above my food. It just allows the particles to separate before they hit, therefore you get even coverage. Now, by all means, you can throw it across the room at your food, but I just don't think you're gonna get a lot of it on there. Now, I always make up twice the amount of that seasoning that I need. I just don't like running out when I'm applying it. Also, once it's fully covered, just put it aside and let's get the barbecue ready. For today's cook, I'm going to be using a 57 centimetre Weber kettle with the rotisserie attachment and basket attachment as well. Now, I want to be roasting at temps around 220 degrees Celsius today. Now, how I'll do that is I'll fill a chimney starter full of briquettes and light that up. Once they're fully ashed over and alight, I'll grab my two charcoal baskets, place them in the centre of the charcoal grill and dump the lit fuel into them. And then I'll separate the baskets, putting them on either side of the charcoal grate. I'll also place an empty tray in between the two charcoal baskets just to catch any drippings. I'm also going to add one piece of peach wood just on one of the charcoal baskets. Put the lid on, make sure all the vents are wide open and let's strap this bird in. One chunk of wood's going to be more than enough in this roasting setup to get some smoky flavour into this bird. It's time to get the chicken into that rotisserie basket now. That's it, just bend the legs in and clip the top basket in place. Pop that into the Weber and get it spinning. Now if you subscribe to the channel, while you're there, you might as well hit that bell button. I can see a lot of you aren't hitting the bell button and you won't get notified when I upload new content. Now, when using a rotisserie, don't forget, keep the lid vent to one side of your food. That way, while the food keeps spinning, you'll get a nice even cook. On the other hand, if you want to try this cook and you don't have a rotisserie, but you're going to use a roasting setup, which is a two charcoal basket, halfway through the cook, just make sure you move that lid vent to the opposite side. That way your food will cook evenly. Today, I'm cooking with a high indirect heat of 220 degrees Celsius. Now the length of cook really depends on the size of chicken. 
This 1.8 kilo bird is gonna take about an hour to cook. Or for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at a two beer cook. Now some of you have asked if my beer timer works with other drinks. Of course it does. It's just beer is more accurate. It's time to check the chicken. Say that 10 times. Now we're looking for an internal temp of 74 degrees on the thigh. Oh, 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 she's ready. Well, that's perfect now, so we can get this off the heat. Now the smell coming off this is absolutely phenomenal. All we need to do is get it out of that charcoal basket. Let the chicken rest for 15 minutes, it's worked hard for you and it's tired now. All right, it's slicing time. Let's see how we did. I mean, there's plenty of juice, but let's have a look. Let's start slicing that breast. Oh. Plenty. Look at the juice. That is just flowing out. Look how moist that looks. Now, there's heaps of juice and the aroma is incredible. But there's only one test that's gonna tell us whether or not we did any good. The good old taste test. Mm. How's that for moist? This is that good, it should be illegal. As always, cheers for watching.